Hey Mary Lou, good morning. Hi everybody. Just getting set up a little bit, waiting for people to join. Good morning. So happy you're all here. Thank you, I'm getting set up. Wait for people to gather. Y'all are the early birds. Hey Cheryl, good morning. Good morning Steven. So this morning I'm doing um, back porch botanical art. We're trying out a different venue. Um, hi. And I'm trying to make sure that everything is going to work and look good. Taping up my paper. Hi everybody. Good morning. I hope y'all have coffee. Happy y'all are here. Hey, Cynthia. Y'all, if I don't know you, because I keep calling people out, if I don't know you, please um, put your name in the comments. Hey, Alice, good morning. If I don't know you, or if I haven't called out your name, put your name in the comments so I know who's here. Um, and if this is your first time, if we haven't met yet, please let me know where you're from, um, where you're watching from. And I like to know what everybody's favorite flower um, or plant is. Maybe you don't like flowers, but... Let me know what you like. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Happy you're back. Good morning. Okay, Cynthia says that it looks good. I'm, I'm so happy. Hey, Brandy, good morning. Happy you're here. I'm taping up my watercolor paper right now. I can show y'all what I'm doing. Last time I had it um, painted pretty firmly to a brick wall, and today I'm going to be drawing on my table easel. Um, and so I'm taping my paper firmly just to a stiff cardboard. Hey, Whitney. I'm so happy you're here. Y'all, Whitney is one of my oldest friends, and we used to live together. I'm so happy she's watching. Again, y'all, if I don't know you, please tell me your name in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, we're going to get going in just a second. I'm taping up my paper right now. Let's see. So the reason I'm doing this, y'all, um, I had a question from after uh, the last botanical program. I had a question about how to use watercolors on a, a larger space in the paper. Um, and so I'm going to get a little wilder with my paint and water today. So bear with me for a second while I get taped up, while everybody joins. So happy y'all are here. And what the tape does um, is just give it uh, a nice, holds it firmly in place so it doesn't buckle or warp while you're painting it. And then also, um, if you paint all the way to the edges and over the blue tape, the painter's tape, when you pull it away carefully, it gives it a really pretty edge, a border to it. Good morning, Erin. Oh, and hey, David. So David and Alice are watching. Is Henry watching too? And there's that. Good morning to everyone. I'll say it one last time. That's a lie. I'll probably say it several more times. Um, if I don't know you or if we haven't met yet, uh, please put where you're watching from in the comments and let me know your favorite flower or plant just because I'm a flower freak and I like to know that about people. Um, interested in combining cal calligraphy using botanical. That, that's cool. Um, we know an artist through the museum who's actually very, very talented with calligraphy. I can hook you up, Joe. All right. Let's see. Do, do, do. How does that look to everybody? Let me get it in a little bit more. 
Yeah, that'll be nice. All right, so last time, Good morning, Gretchen. Still undecided about your favorite flower. Yeah, you gave me like a list last time, which I liked. I like all those flowers too. I always say that roses are my favorite um, because there's so much variety in roses. But yeah, it's hard to really pick a favorite, isn't it? Y'all, I apologize for the dogs. Um, those are my neighbors. They're lovely dogs, but they will also be joining the live stream this morning with their voices. So. Watching from Atlanta, favorite flowers are wisteria and gardenias. Fabulous. Very nice. So happy you're watching. Thank you. Matthew or Matt, I don't know what you prefer to be called. Um, I'm going to be working from some cute little pansies today. These are from my garden. Last time I did um, a little probably what you would consider a weed from the garden, which I actually found out that I, I don't think it's dan dandelion. I did some research because it was kind of bugging me that I called it dandelion, but it grows so tall because dandelions don't grow that tall. Um, and the closest I could find for what I did last time is something called a wild lettuce. But, oh, Cynthia says she likes the, the background sounds, the birds and the dogs. Fabulous. Okay, good. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so these are, these are my precious little pansies from, from my garden. You see those in there? And obviously I am not painting an actual like still life, so I'm not going to be painting the container that they're in. So I was just going to let you know, don't worry about what container you have them in. And if you can go sit in the grass and paint, even better. Um, but I chose these today because they have such a good uh, kind of ruffle to them. They've got lots of good little curves and edges. And I love the delicate nature of the petals, the way they do this right here, where they kind of curve in and overlap. So what we're going to be doing today um, is last time I showed you the basics of drawing, um, looking really closely. And we're going to be doing more of that today, more looking closely. But we will um, be doing it with a focus of how to then create something that looks like it's curved or um, where petals overlap um, or how things kind of twist, a lot of, you know, that natural twist that bo botanical elements do. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, so when we're drawing, if you've just joined me for the first time today, um, I like to use, normally when I draw, I like to use a very hard lead pencil. Um, because I like to draw lightly so that I can erase if I need to. But for the purposes of this live stream, I will be using a very soft lead pencil. Um, I think I used a 3B last time. So that way I can still draw lightly, but you can see it better. So we're going to get going. Um, any other questions before I get going? I feel like I'm rushing a little bit today. Let me slow down. Let me drink my coffee. Did I say good morning to everybody? I, I don't recognize some of these names, so if I don't know you, please tell me who you are and where you're watching from. Oh, and I didn't introduce myself. If, if I don't know you, you don't need, know me. Um, I'm Laura, and I work at the Museum of Fine Arts, Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, um, in our education department. And um, I do this class because I'm obsessed with nature and all things floral. Steven is laughing at me. Um, I've got a comment that says, combine calligraphy, would you do calligraphy before you wet the paper? I think that would depend on what kind of ink you're using, um, but I don't do calligraphy. I do like to, to write names in sometimes, so like after I um, paint it, I would go grab it off, off screen because I have something that I actually did that with recently. Um, but I would probably, um, I do, I, I draw or write the name in after. So, but I've never done it as like a professional calligraphy artist before. So I don't know what the preference by a professional there would be. I would personally draw, paint, and then after it's all dry, I would add the calligraphy. Um, but I do think if you're using, you know, a permanent ink pen, um, it shouldn't be bothered by the water, so. 
Hey, Donna, good morning. I'm so happy you're here. All right, so what I was just saying was, last time we talked about um, staying calm, so just enjoying what you're doing, being relaxed, taking your deep breaths, enjoying being in nature, um, and being calm with what you're drawing, so don't put pressure on yourself, right? We're just here to have a good time. And when you are drawing things or painting things from nature, um, it's just kind of about the, the enjoying the beauty of those things, right? Now, we are doing botanical drawing. Um, and in case you're joining me for the first time, I will quickly say that um, botanical illustration is something that is very um, kind of scientific and precise. If you think of the, the, the term um, like medical illustration, so for textbooks or reference books, things like that. Um, and botanical art is still looking closely and being precise, but you have a little bit more freedom, a little more artistic license um, to just kind of focus on the beauty. And it doesn't have to be a full, complete picture. It can just be the part of the plant that you wanna that you wanna focus on. Um, let's see. So I've got another person I don't know, um, Liana from Montgomery. Hope I'm saying your name right. So happy you're here. Be like lilies. Very nice. Okay. Hey, Brad. Y'all, this is so fun. So many friends are here today. That makes me so happy. But so today we're going to be, um, I'm going to draw a pansy flower, um, which if you aren't familiar, they're these precious little things, little tiny babies. And they've got a great ruffle and curved edge to them. And they kind of close in and overlap like that. And so that's what we're going to focus on. Um, I'm going to put mine right here so I can see it. Let's see. And actually, I'm going to put it in a taller base so I can get it how I want it. But it does not matter if you're not doing an actual still life, right? I'm just focusing on the flower. So it doesn't really matter how you have it, what container you have it in. Don't put pressure on yourself for that either. So I, I've changed it to this which it's much too short for, but it will help it uh, be just how I need it to be so I can see it well. All right, so I'm gonna put you there. And get this where I like it. And then get y'all where you can see what I'm doing. Um, if you've just joined, I said earlier also, I taped my paper down. I just used um, a bit of a cardboard box for a flat surface to tape it to. Last time I had my paper taped to a brick wall, which worked really well. Um, but I'm working from a table easel this time. Oop, that's not gonna work. Sorry, y'all, bear with me. I'm trying to make this where you can see it. Up just a little bit. There we go. Nope. <laughs> I got a new device and this is my first time using it. Thank you for your sweet love and patience. There's my shoulder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's oh, there's my backyard. Hello, and there's that. Is that gonna work? I'll make it work. All right. I'll just get a little closer, and we'll draw there. All right, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna use a three B, like I said. Um, so it's a soft lead pencil which will make the lead really dark, the line very dark. And all that means is I like to draw really lightly. I don't press very hard. And this way I'll be able to, um, you can still see what I'm drawing even though I'm drawing lightly. So when I'm looking at this flower, and I said this last time too, everybody starts somewhere different, okay? So don't worry about doing this exactly how I'm doing it. The whole point of this class is to just have fun and relax and enjoy nature, okay? So, I like to start when I'm doing flowers in the center. It's a personal thing. Um, I don't really know why. It just is a natural place for me to start. My eyes like to go there. So I'm looking at the center, and y'all let me know if you can see this once I start drawing. I'm going to draw a light, a little curve. Last time we also talked about um, remember to draw loosely, so to not try to be super um, sharp with your edges. 
because if we think about these, these flowers or these leaves or petals or whatever they are, they are, they're delicate. Plants are delicate, so we want to give them that delicacy when we're drawing them also. Um, so let me show you what I'm doing. This one that I just drew right here, okay? So we've got this that kind of came in here. That is going to be doo -doo -doo, this right here where it's flipping up a little bit, where it's overlapping itself. So I would go back to, uh, to complete that petal. I would add another little line like this. Okay, so now we've got a petal that is um, turning in, kind of folding over on itself. And all I used to do that were two simple lines. Um, so let's keep going. Here's my center. Here's my bottom petal. We've got this little guy over here, kind of coming up. Kind of close down, make it light. It's got a lot of curve in it. The other fun thing about art, y'all, is that it's always open for interpretation, right? It doesn't have to look exactly like it. I know y'all will love me even if it doesn't look exactly like it. And I will love you. There, there's my pansy. Oh, now it's a little bit too low. How'd we do? I think I like that. Let's give it a little bit more detail in the center to draw or to paint on. Maybe I can zoom out and that will help. Nope, that's zooming in. <laughs> there we go. All right. So in the center, you can see we talk a lot about, um, or I've been talking a lot about the lines that make up the different petals or the stem, whatever you're doing, because it can all be broken down into lines and shapes, okay? So if you look in the center, we've got this great little, almost like a little triangle there. That's the center of a pansy. So I'm going to add her, give her a little detail. Oh, Whitney, I'm glad you're having a good time. I wish you were here with me in person, but one day when we are allowed to be together again, we will do that. Um, all right, so a little, a little line there, a little line there, just a little curve down, and that's my center. And I will give more detail to that with the color when we do the painting in a second. Um, and then to get the idea for my complete flower, obviously a stem, y'all, it's just lines. And I said this last time, um, so I'll say it again if we've got some new people watching. You're, an instinct when people are drawing um, is to do sketches like this. And you think that you're going to be more accurate that way. Yeah. But it really is just kind of embracing our um, timid nature, our hesitation when we're trying to draw. And you're going to have more success if you just go for it. And the other thing is, if it's not perfect, the reason that we draw lightly and we start in pencil is because you can't erase it. So don't worry about it. So um, pansies have these lovely little tiny delicate stems to match their delicate petal nature. So I'm going to have just a little tiny baby line. Some of that got a little fat. Some of that is good. I'll take it. I can play with it when I'm painting. And then I'll give it a little leaf right about down here is where she's got one. And so the little pansy leaves are these also very delicate, precious little things with little curved, scalloped kind of edges. And it's got a little ruffle at the bottom of that too. So where this connects to the stem, essentially, if I had it cut it <laughs> off of its, uh, its plant, another flower would have grown. And so it's got a lot of little green growth down here too. And I made that a little bit too pointy so I can fix it like that. And then these little guys are coming out here. This one's coming over this way. Maybe I've got another stem coming up right here. I drew that one really light. How are we feeling? I'm enjoying this. I keep looking back to try to see what y'all are seeing. I, I feel like it's going well. So the other stem over here, of course, obviously my focus is going to be this 
main flower. So I'm not trying to do another flower here, another flower here. I'm, I'm adding things that kind of complement my focal point, but I'm not trying to take away the attention. So over here, I've got kind of like a little bud, and I'll show you. It's, um, I'm using artistic license again, because it's actually a dead flower. <laughs> but um, I'm going to pretend that it's a bud. And it's got a lot of these little baby greens where it's coming. And it's actually, so it's facing away from us. So we're seeing kind of the back of the stem here. And then it would be kind of coming in like this, overlapping. But we can't really see the front, so we're just going to guess. There, lines and an implied little bud. All right. So that's my drawing for today. Um, last time I went back over my drawing with ink, with a technical pen. Today I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, this was a last minute decision, but I thought you guys might like me to shake it up a little bit and show you some different ways you can do things. So I'm actually, I brought out my Prismacolors, um, and I'm going to not color it in. I'm going to outline um, and kind of play with some concept um, of color with the Prismacolors before I add the watercolor paints. And this is just to show you all that you don't have to do it a certain way, right? We can always just have fun and enjoy it, try new things, figure it out. Um, it's art. It's interpretive. Have fun. Did I say have fun? I'm sharpening a pencil really fast before I use it. I think that's the color I want. Um, they're kind of a light green. Let's see. Y'all, one thing I'm really bad about, can you give me a time check? I forgot to get a clock out here. Last time I had my sister doing it, and she's not watching today. Someone tell me what time it is. Please. All right, sharpening my pencils. So these are regular color pencils. Cheryl, not watercolor pencils. That's a great question. Um, these are just Prismacolor, my favorite. Um, they're so much fun to use. They blend really well. Um, but I'm going to thank you guys for that time update. I appreciate it. We're perfect on time. Um, Cheryl asked, um, Cheryl's a friend of mine and, and a regular in some of my classes. Um, she asked if these are going to be regular color pencils or watercolor. Watercolor pencils are very cool. Um, they will draw like a color pencil, and then when you add water, ta-da, they, they kind of blend out like watercolor paint does. It's gorgeous. Um, but I am using Prismacolors, again, just to give you an idea of how you can play with different things and have fun. So I've gotten two sharpened that I want to use, kind of a darker green and kind of a more yellowy grass green. Um, and all I'm going to do is just go in and kind of figure out where some of my shadows are, where some of my, my darker places are going to be. So I'm, I'm still looking. My, my flower and my stem, they're right here. I'm looking. I guess I can move it closer so y'all can see it. Oh, that's nice. Okay, it only took me, what, 30 minutes to figure that out? There we go. All right. Um, figuring out where my shadows are. Doing a little bit of an outline. Don't have to do the whole thing, just have some fun. And then kind of getting a little bit of that lighter color where I might want it. It's gonna be darker down here too. You'll notice I'm still drawing loosely. I'm it's it's a loose sketch, if you will, while having a precise intent. I like to make things as complicated as I can. All right. Let's see this here. Oh, poor connection. Is that better? There we go. Um, what I just said was that these will not wash away. All right. So these are a very um, kind of waxy color pencil. And again, I'm just kind of putting it on there, slopping it, and not really. Not coloring in because I'm going to paint. Um, and then let me play with some of the color on the petals. Yes, I can zoom in, Joe. Thank you for saying that. Great question. There we go, guys. All right. Boop. 
now I'm missing my, this thing is really great. I just need to, well, <laughs> There we go. Is that better? Is that better? Yes, okay. Not perfect, but who's perfect? All right. So for the petals, I'm just gonna play with a little bit of pink and yellow. Um, again, I don't wanna do too much because I would rather the focus be the watercolor when I add it. Let's see. So I'm just making sure they're extra sharp. Steven just answered um, somebody's question about if this recording will be available, and the answer is yes. It'll be um, available on Instagram and YouTube. Oh, that's exciting. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to play with these. I'm taking a little bit of liberty with these. I'm not doing the color right like it is in the petals. And again, I'm not trying to be... I'm not following my original drawing perfectly either. Sometimes I'm sloppier than others. All right, that's where my yellows are gonna go. A little bit of it there, a little bit there. And there's gonna be some shading in here because this guy's coming forward a little bit. Hmm, no, I'm taking it where you can't see it. All right, and the little tiny bit of green is going to be in the center, right in here. All right, that's all I'm going to do with my drawing right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hopefully move this to my table. And let's see, flower over here. Is everybody having a good time? Is anybody um, drawing or painting along? I know I had a few people last time who were following along. I would love to know if anybody is today. Try again. I'm setting this up. And then we're gonna move like this. Uh, Y'all forgive my back porch. Um, it's a typical back porch, and it is, am I moving too fast, Cheryl? You're trying to keep up? Um, there's stuff stored on my porch. Porch, por porch, I can talk. All right. Okay, so we're moving this way, and we're gonna try to move it down where you can see the drawing, hopefully well enough. I'm going to adjust in a second, so bear with me, y'all. Thank you so much. Let's see. There's that. And I can move this. Do, do, do. So I've switched to sitting. Get that water. How is that for a view, y'all? We happy with that? See what my comments say. <laughs> my my perch porch, yes. All right, so um, I've got my water for my watercolor paints. Um, I showed last time. I've got my my palette is just an A carton, um, and this is great for watercolors because after they dry, you can just add a little bit more water to them. Um, so this is the exact same paint that I used the last time, which was two weeks ago. Um, after they dry, you just add a little more water. Typically, you spritz it. I didn't have my spritzer, so I just um, poured water in this morning. And it enlivens the, the pigment again, which is so much fun. Um, I love that about watercolors. As I also said last time, I'm using brushes I would normally use for acrylic painting. Um, have not, somehow I've misplaced my my smaller watercolor brushes. Um, I'll show you a larger watercolor brush. Um, they're very, very soft uh, bristles, if you can even call them that. And um, I'm gonna be using my smaller brushes because we're working on a very delicate, small baby flower. 
Um, and so these are technically something I would use for acrylic, but you can use them for watercolor. Um, I'm not, I'm not being that fancy. Okay. All right. Drink a little coffee. How's everybody doing? I think some people said they're following along. So I'll take a little bit of a, a moment to drink some coffee. And I'm going to go ahead and ask, um, Stephen, will you tell me when I have, um, 10 and five minutes left? This is the perk of having somebody that you work with watching along because you can ask them to do things for you. All right. Last time we painted, um, we did wet paint on dry paper. So I did not, thank you, Stephen. I did not um, wet the paper first initially. Can y'all see this okay? Do I need to zoom in a little bit? Let's see. Whoop, that's my arm. Mm -hmm. Stop doing that. <laughs> Talking to my phone. All right. All right. So like I was saying, we're going to do, to begin on the stem, I'm going to do um, a wet paint on a dry paper. So I'm not adding any water to the paper before I begin. Um, I'm just going to get some water and get it in my paints. So let's see. Let you see that. Do, do, do. I already got my, uh, most of my greens wet, a little too wet, honestly, but um, that's okay. Getting a little bit of a dark green there, getting it ready for some shadows. And my other greens are already quite ready, maybe too ready. I might have to add some more to them, or I can just pull some, pull some yellow over. I need to lighten it up anyway. All right. And I'm going to get a little bit of a blue ready for my dark or darker shadows. All right. So my, my stem and leaf colors are ready. We also talked about last time, and I'll say this while I'm working. Um, you don't have to have extra fancy paints, y'all. Um, they can be the cake palette watercolors that you used, you know, when we were students um, in grade school. It's going to be very soft. That's nice. So the, the perk um, or the great thing about doing wet paint on dry paper is that you have a lot of control over it. It's going to go exactly where you want it to go. Can everybody see this okay? All right. So I'm doing a very kind of springy green color here because that is very true to the pansy. And I'm just, it's, very soft. It might get out of the lines a little bit. This is a fun, fun thing you can do with watercolors. Doesn't have to be perfect. Very light right now. And I'm going to go back in a second and kind of add some shadows where I need them to give a little depth. I'm going to bring that down lower than where I did the color pencil, and that's just a personal aesthetic. It's just what I want it to be. Um, all right, and then we'll do a little bit, some darker greens in here where we would have shadows. I'm going to move my flower where I can see it a little better. All right. So right here. And then you see how it's really, can you all see that? There's no um, blending between those right now. And one of the things that I said we were going to talk about today is how to do um, color gradation with paints. Um, this right here is easy enough. <laughs> I'm just taking a little bit of a clean, wet brush, and I'm just going to go back and kind of wash them out. All right, and again, I'm, I'm painting very lightly, okay? So I'm not actually completely removing the paint, just kind of helping it blend a little more. Um, color gradation, value gradation, if you're not familiar with that term, um, for something to, to gradate, um, if you think of the word gradual, how something happens slowly, that's essentially what it is. It is a 
color change um, or the change in the lightness or darkness of the color um, slowly. So it's not a stark jump from super light to super dark, like I have right here with the pencil versus the watercolor. Um, so to fix this leaf, let me look at it, think about where it is. It's kind of on the back. So I want to have a little bit of a darker right in here. I'm going to paint that in just a little bit, I'm painting it over here. And then I'm taking my brush, wetting it, cleaning it off, and believe it or not, drying it off. Um, and then I'm just kind of pulling that color out. And then I want to have it stronger on the edges, got a little more color. That's better. Just, just the implication. It's subtle, but it is nice. How is everyone doing? No comments in a while. Okay. I'm going to go to my petals now because that's what I really want to do. Let's be honest. I just want to do the flower. Okay. So now I'm going to add some water to my pinks and my yellows, or my reds rather, because pink is red. It's just a lighter red. Let you watch this so you don't just have to look at my flower the entire time. Get some water in here. Like I said, I had a little overkill on the water earlier. Um, trying to prep in haste. Don't do that, y'all. Be calm. I should take my own advice. All right, get that nice, watery, gorgeous color. We're going to need a little orange. Um, and I've also got, you know, yellow, so that if I need to play with my orange or my red a little bit, I can have the yellow to make it what I want it to be. You make orange by mixing red and yellow. I also have some uh, pre-mixed store-bought orange, so there's nothing wrong with cheating either. Okay. In this world, I wouldn't suggest, you know, cheating in life because, well, I don't know. Do what you want to do. Okay. All right. Let's see. What am I doing here? Let me pull her out of the water so you can see her. Do, do, do. Here she is. Okay. So you see this gorgeous orange in here. And then it kind of goes, fades out to this lighter yellow and pinks. So what we're going to do to achieve that, hopefully, <laughs> is play with something that we call, um, we're going to use a little bit of two techniques. So a wet on wet, which we did last time also. So I'm going to wet the paper first and then paint the pigment into it. Um, and I'm also going to play with the idea of um, a fade or feathering. Um, and so the way that you do that, I'll show you on the edge really fast. So, okay, so here's the wet on wet, getting a bunch of clean water, out here and I'm going to put what color should I put back there um, make some bluey greens and I'm just going to take that color and paint it then and it just flows so beautifully and we can mix easily that way too sorry y'all I know I'm jumping I just said I was going to do the petals but I'm going to give you an example before I get to them and now I'm taking some nice pinky red and let it mix a little bit, maybe make a little purple right there where they're meeting. Just have fun. Keeping it subtle so that my um, focus is still the flower, of course. And then when I said the fading technique, which I'm going to show you over on this side, 
or feathering. Um, I'm going to, and this is what I'm going to do a little bit in the petals also. For a feathering technique, I'm going to take a lot of my initial pigment. Let's see, I want to have a pretty deep purple blue, a nice blue violet. Let's see what I can get. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. So I'm just playing with my blues and reds to make the purple the way that I want it. So I'm going to have it be um, really dark. I don't want it to be dark. I'm going to flip it. I want it to fade backwards. Bear with me. Okay. Actually, now I'm working up here. No one's commented for a while, so I assume you're just watching and you don't have any questions. Um, all right, taking my purple, painting it nice and dark where I want it. And then I'm going to take my same brush and I just dip it in the water, clean it off, and then brush along the edge to pull it out. Dip it in the water, clean it off, brush it along the edge to pull it out. Water, clean, brush. I'm getting a little bit too washed out. See if I can blend it a little better. So you get the idea. Maybe it'll show up better in my petals. You see how it's going from being darker to lighter a little slowly. Not so much of a jump. All right. Here we go. Get y'all really close in there so you can see. Let's see if I can zoom anymore. There we go. There we go. That's good. Okay. And now I'm gonna use with some of my pink and yellow. I'm going to start right here. So I'm going to get a nice strong kind of orangey yellow. Very bold. Or yellow orange rather. <laughs> so not as much water and more of the pigment. And I'm going to kind of paint that right there where I'm going to want it to blend out from. Right along the lip of that petal where it goes into the center. And then I'm gonna take some clean water and spread that out like this. Let it kind of fold down. I'm gonna use a little more color. It's too soft. So at this point, then, we're doing more of a wet on wet, painting into it. I like it to have some pink, too. Put a little bit of that on my brush. Just on the edges. Every petal looks a little different. And then on this one out here, let me clean it off really fast. So I, if you quickly, um, you can uh, fix, we're not going to call it a mistake, but I painted here where I didn't want to paint yet. And so then I took a clean uh, brush and just kind of soaked it back up. So I'm going to reverse that. Um, and it is going to be lighter because, again, that, remember, is the part of the petal that we painted that's folding in. It's kind of curving in to show that pansy ruffle. Um, so it's got a little bit more yellow and a lightness to it. But you're not gonna really have that 
indication without this other line that's there. That's really helpful to give an idea of what the shape is. And then to imply that this is more forward than the inside of the petal, I'm going to add a little bit of um, darker shadow or a little bit really more pink on the inside of this line. Is everybody following me okay? Am I doing all right? Kind of that orangey pink would be nice, a good deep color. Okay. Just subtle. It's just barely there. Clean that up. It's bleeding over a little bit. That's okay. There we go. All right. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna come back and add a little bit of a darker pigment right there. Um, and I also wanna add these guys. Where are they? So you can see them, whoa, so close. You see how in the middle it's got those great lines? I wanna add those too. But I'm gonna let it dry a little bit before I do that so it doesn't bleed so much. So I'm gonna go work on the other petals now. Um, that are all a lot softer and a little more pink um, than that one. I want this to be a little more orange, so I'm adding more orange there. There, I like that more now. A little water, blend that out. Do you like when I tell you I'm going to do things and then I continue working on something else? Hi, I'm Laura. I'm an indecisive artist. So I'm doing a, a wet on dry. And again, not trying to be too accurate. Um, accurate, yes, but super precise, no letting the watercolor be what it is, which is beautiful and soft and flowy. So I did wet on dry and now I'm just taking some wet water, blending it a little bit with the paper. Um, get a little yellow in there, just a little. This one, this gets a little too orange. I want it to be pinker. So let me get some red. Over here, it's kind of curving down, so I need it to be darker. Blend it out with a clean, wet brush. A little more yellow in there. In the middle of looking closely, it is important to take your time and look back at your work to make sure that you're not getting caught up in your looking closely. And you kind of can stop seeing what you were trying to see, if that makes sense. Your eyes get tired. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Nice green in the center, a yellow green. Let's see. Oh, I see what I did. I think I moved my comments. Let's see. Am I cleaning with a dry brush? Um, I don't know when you asked that, so I apologize. Um, I'm cleaning with a slightly damp brush, not entirely dry. Um, do you keep more than one dry brush handy for the tidy-ups? Yes, I do. Um, 
if I need it. But I, yeah, I always have several brushes. Y'all don't judge me, they are beat up um, on hand just in case. Um, all right. Okay, Stephen has just let me know. We've got about 10 minutes. Thank you, Stephen. All right, so I've got my green. This, and this is gonna be a really, really yellow green. Um, I want it to be a little bit darker. Or not darker, but bolder. So less water, more paint is what I want. Help it stand out more. Just a little bit of green in all of that. Let's see my colors. And then back to the petals, pinky and yellows. And look over on this side. So this front petal that we did first um, is slightly, I mean, it is technically in front of this petal, but they are overlapped in a way that is like stuck together, super close. So I'm not going to worry about an idea of trying to imply that the line already implies it and the edge here implies that this is our front and forward pedal. Um, again, this is why lines are so important also. So back here is a really soft yellow. And I'm just painting wet on dry paper just to kind of get it right where I want it to go. And then this little curve in here. I'm going to make a little bit of a darker pink. Right there. And to my clean brush, just kind of letting those colors flow together. Having fun. Let's see. This petal back here hasn't gotten any attention. Let me see what I can do. She needs a lot of pink. I said this last time too, of course, making any noises that you can as you paint always helps. I did the noises with the brush strokes, right? Let's get a soft yellow on the edge. So oh, that's nice. That's lovely. She got a little wild, but she's fun, isn't she? All right. Just mixing a little more. All right, now that these down here are dry, I'm going to um, go back and add a little bit of the sharper detail. And you can experiment. You can do this um, with Prismacolors again if you want to, with color pencils. Um, that won't wash away or blend. You can use um, your ink. Let me get that where y'all can see it. You can use your ink uh, technical pen or just an ultra fine Sharpie, um, whatever you want. And I'm just gonna go through and kind of try to add this sharper line details that are in the petals. All right, I'm gonna use paint um, and they're kind of a, deep purplish brown is how I'm going to at least portray them. So I'm going to get a really deep purple. Add a little bit of yellow to it. Make it some neutral. Muddy it out. Well, that's nice. 
Okay, so this is what I got, y'all. With the little, ooh, can we see that? Hold it back, Laura. Did a purple with a little yellow to make it kind of a um, neutral. It's got a good kind of yellowish brown tint to it. And I'm going to go back, and I made a little point with my brush. You can see that. I just kind of twisted it like this. Turn, turn, turn in the paint to help it be pointy. And I'm going to use it almost like a pencil, pencil edge. So very lightly touching. I think I need a little bit more pigment on there. Someone asked after um, it's completely dry, if you could do a soft wash over the whole area. Um, I mean, that would essentially wash away your paint. Um, I would suggest working with washes while it's still a little bit wet. Um, after it's dry, you're gonna be kind of be erasing your work. About five minutes left. I'm going to try to wrap up so I can say a proper goodbye to y'all. I hope you've enjoyed this. I have. I'm probably going to paint a lot more today, too. I can't quite get that as dark as I want it to be. So I'm pulling in some different colors. A little bit of red to strengthen it. You can do it. Let's see if that works. Here we go. Really, I didn't want these ones here, so I'm working really fast. Cleaned off my brush, and I'm just going to kind of take them away. I don't want you there. Here we go. All right. I think I have just enough time to do a little bit of a background. I'm going to use a bigger brush, um, proper watercolor brush, and I'm going to do a wet on wet. That's my arm. Back and out a little bit. There you go. So I'm just brushing it. Just kind of create this nice wet background up to what I did. Oops, I forgot the bud, but I can work on that later. All right. I'm going to play with purple again because I love it. It in. Be fun. It's so dark, but I love it. Get it to kind of the edge. This is a fun thing about watercolors. You can just play with them. Um, so I'm leaving some of that space. I'm going to come back with a little bit of red. Let those play together. This is a very loud background for this tiny little flower. Sorry, I'm covering up what I'm doing there. Here we go. Bring it in there. And then just wash it down. Thank you everybody for joining us today or joining me. I hope you have had fun. Um, I can't wait to see, maybe some of you will post some of the drawings and paintings that you've done.